I zero, the city council authorized and directed the city uh, attorney's office to defend the case of Wright View Landscape Development Inc. versus City of Elk Grove et al. Sacramento Superior Court case number 34-2020-0027815. And that is all to report out. And I'm going to go ahead and adjourn the uh, special meeting of the city council uh, at 6 p.m. And at this point in time, I want to go ahead and Call the uh, call to order the Elk Grove City Council regular meeting on Wednesday, October the 14th at 6 p.m. Mark. Thank you, Mayor. Consistent with executive orders N 29 20 and N 35 20 issued by the governor of the state of California, this meeting will be conducted by teleconference only. This meeting of the Elk Grove City Council will be replayed on Metro Cable Channel 14 on Friday, October 16th at 1 p.m. and Sunday, October 18th at 9 a.m. It is being closed captioned and will be webcast at sacmetrocable.tv. City Council meeting videos are also archived on the city's website at elkgrovecity.org. For members of the participating audience who may have personal electronic devices, please place them on silent mode during the meeting or mute them when you are not speaking. Hill Grove City Council welcomes, appreciates, and encourages participation in the City Council meeting. City Council requests that you limit your presentation to three minutes per person so that all present will have time to participate. City Council reserves the right to reasonably limit the total time for public comment on any particular noticed agenda item as it may deem necessary. Pursuant to resolution number 2010-24, no individual speaker concerning public comment may address the City Council for more than three minutes. The City Clerk will run a speaker timer, and after the first two minutes have passed, a single bell ding will sound to inform that one minute remains. When the total three-minute time concludes, a series of bells will sound. With that, Mayor, we're ready for the roll call. All right, roll call, please. For the roll call, Council Member Wynn. Here. Council Member Hume. Here. Council Member Suen. Here. Vice Mayor Detrick. Here. And Mayor Lee. Here. All right, next item. That'll take us to 1.2, the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you're at, if you could address the United States uh, flag and um, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, folks. Next item at the beginning of every uh, regular city council meeting, the council would like to invite members of the public to join us in a moment of silence. So if you could join the council, please. Thank you very much. All right, next item is approval of agenda. I have an agenda. Is there a motion? Motion. Got a motion. There's a second. Uh, roll call, please. And the roll call vote for the approval of the agenda. Council Member Wynn? Yes. Council Member Hume? Aye. Council Member Suen? Yes. Vice Mayor Detrick? Yes. And Mayor Lee? Yes. All right, we have an agenda. Uh, next item, please. We'll go through section three, our closed session, as there are no closed session items on the regular agenda, which will take us to section four, our presentations and announcements, starting with item 4.1, which is a recognition of service to Planning Commissioner Frank Maida. And uh, staff, just uh, I know this is not typical, but um, I mean, uh, Commissioner. Uh, Meta has served uh, quite a long time, has dedicated a significant portion of his uh, life to helping the city. So I'm going to ask staff to see if uh, they can contact uh, him. But I'm going to invite um, uh, the most senior in service, uh, which is uh, Council Member Hume, uh, who had also served um, while he was on the commission with uh, Commissioner Meta to present this. Council Member? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I actually didn't serve with Frank Meta. He had very big shoes to fill when he came on the Planning Commission. 
uh, because he was tapped by then uh, Council Member Sophia Sherman to be my replacement uh, when I resigned from the Planning Commission in order to run for council. Sorry about that. You've been around so long. I just made the assumption. Yeah, I know. And and you just you when you said how long he served for, that reminded me that I've served that amount of time plus five and a half years. So, but no, Frank, uh, he's been a, a a steady voice on the commission. He has represented uh, particularly the old town uh, business community as well as the old town special planning area uh, with diligence and uh, with a, a strong voice uh, to preserve um, the uniqueness of the area and trying to make it as tenable as possible as a, a place of commerce. And so he was selected to serve uh, the community as a planning commissioner on April 3rd, 2006. And we are privileged to have benefited from Commissioner Meta's talents, dedication, and his position as chair, vice chair, and planning commission member. And whereas Frank continues to build on a long history of involvement in the local community, uh, he is an Elk Grove native son, uh, raised here and a graduate of Elk Grove High School. Um, he shared his expertise and vision to bring community planning to the city of Elk Grove, serving with the highest level of professionalism and integrity. And he'll be greatly missed, and he will himself leave uh, big shoes to fill. So now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of the City of Elk Grove hereby recognizes and celebrates Frank Meta for his many years of dedicated service on the City of Elk Grove Planning Commission extending our utmost appreciation, respect, and commending Frank for his exemplary service to the community of Elk Grove. Signed this 14th day of October, 2020. Excellent staff. Do we have a commission yeah. made online? Well, you do. Um, well, thank you, uh, Mayor and Council, for that, uh, that recognition. I. Uh, I think I'd like to say a few words in uh, regard to, I first want to thank uh, Sophia Sherman for uh, uh, the appointment. Uh, when she first, when I was first approached by Sophia to see if I would uh, fill that seat, uh, I have to admit to a certain deg degree of reluctance, uh, but I'm so glad that uh, I took the uh, time to uh, reflect on it and and decided to join the, the uh, commission because it's been a wholly unique experience. And I think I'm reflecting on that more since my decision to resign that uh, what an opportunity to work with uh, so many people uh, of different backgrounds, applicants, staff, uh, advocates, and even activists. Uh, so I, uh, I feel grateful for the opportunity of served, and uh, I can only hope that I did, uh, uh, well, frankly, a, a good job. I tried to always be prepared, and uh, I'd just like to uh, say thank you to you all. Mayor. Go ahead, Vice Mayor. Vice Mayor Deckard. Frank, you know, you're, Mark, that you've made not only in the city of Elk Grove, but your your time on the Planning Commission, always considered a voice of reason. Uh, as you mentioned, you were always prepared. And as I as I looked at, you've completed 14 years, and we've tried to encapsulate it in a one-page document, which it's impossible to do. But I want you from myself, and I'm sure the rest of the council agrees with me that uh, 14 years is a phenomenal amount of time to to give to any, whether it's a profession or a volunteer position, which this is basically a volunteer position that you did. And I can't thank you enough for, for those 14 years of service and uh, wish you all the best in, in retirement from the Planning Commission spend more time with your family and love seeing the photos on Facebook with you, your expanded family and your all the way down to your grandchildren. So congratulations on your retirement and thank you again for your years of service. Thank you very much, Steve. You're welcome. Mayor, this is Council Member Sue. Go ahead, Council Member. Thank you. Uh, Frank, or Uncle Frank, as I affectionately call you, I, I also want to extend my gratitude and, and thanks for your service. Uh, since I joined on the council, you, you reached out to me and uh, 
um, with a uh, mentoring uh, hand and uh, I really appreciated our conversation since the first day I, I joined the council and the friendship uh, that grew from there. Um, as mentioned earlier, you, you know, you, you've, you've done a fantastic job if there was any, any doubt um, in the sense that you were always prepared. You gave an honest opinion. I think you were an honest broker and you, you tried to uh, weigh things in a, in a balanced way um, and, uh, you know, looking out for um, the best interests of our city. So for that, I will always be grateful and I too um, wish you well in your retirement. I'm disappointed to see you go, but I, I understand uh, um, after so much time why you, you might feel it's time to, to move on. But I, I just want to uh, thank you and wish you well in your future endeavors. Thank you very much, Darren. Can I go next, Mr. Mayor? Go ahead, Council Member. Thank you. Um, Frank, I remember meeting you for the very first time four years ago, and I, I think I spotted you before you spotted me because of the hat. And I thought, man, that, that man over there looks really interesting. I'd love to meet him and chat with him. And I remember we were at a, a lemonade, we were at an event and you were getting lemonade and I walked over there and just started talking to you. Um, and since then, I don't think I've ever seen you without your hat on. So I don't know if I'd be able to recognize you without it. Um, but you know, everything the vice mayor and the council members said, I just feel very fortunate to be able have to have worked with you these last four years and to meet your amazing wife, Paula. And you may retire and you may be gone from here, but I know exactly where you're at every morning. And I always enjoyed when I would go in there and you're there and you'd come down um, Paula's uh, shop there and, and we'd chit chat and talk about just life in general. And you'd, you'd educate me on, um, just our city and what you've seen and what you've, you know, what you, you've, um, you've uh, been able to uh, recognize and, and whatnot. And I, and I appreciate that more than you'll, you'll ever know. And so um, don't be surprised if you see me coming by more often now, because uh, I'm not letting you go that easily just because you're not going to be up in that dais and on the planning commission. Uh, I believe that you'll still be around. And if, if not, we're going to make sure that you're still around. So thank you very much, sir, for everything. Well, thank you. And you know you're always welcome here. Uh, Commissioner uh, Maida, you're not retiring from the promotional item business, are you? It's just retiring no, from the commission? We're not, we're not doing that, no. Okay. Well, um, most people don't know this, but I met you about 20 years ago um, when I... Uh, started coming in and um, having um, you and Paula make uh, promotional items for the County Office of Education. Uh, and I, you know, I have to say that um, I've learned quite a bit of stuff from you, particularly, you know, how to make plaques that look uh, exceptional. So, you know, thank you for all that. Uh, but I think more importantly, your dedication and your work for the city of Elk Grove, uh, your legacy and your mark has been made here. And, um, uh, the community and the residents of Elk Grove will forever remember uh, what you have done. Uh, thank you for your service and um, you know, best wishes to your, uh, your next endeavor. Frank, uh, happy trails, my friend. And as I said uh, in reading the proclamation, you came in having, I think, big shoes to fill, and but I think you leave even bigger shoes to fill. So enjoy it. Well, that's kind of you to say, Pat. Uh, and uh, I'll, uh, I know you got a decision to make tonight, and uh, all the best to you and to the applicant. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Mayor, before we, uh, and I don't want Mr. Maida to hang up just yet, but I did want to touch base with you, Mayor and Council. I believe we do have another caller uh, available on this item. Oh, okay. All right. Go ahead and bring him on. Mr. Murphy, if you can turn the volume down in the background, you're part of the meeting and you can go ahead. I'm going to go outside where it's better than anyway. So, no. Hello? Yep, go right ahead. Oh, hey, hi, Frank. George Murphy here. Hi, George. Hey, uh, I uh, thought it might be a good time to call in. Uh, and anyway, I just wanted to t t tell you how much uh, I and I'm sure all the other commissioners that you 
serve with. Uh, appreciate your leadership and commitment uh, as a volunteer in a job that sometimes seems like, seems thankless. I do know the effort and time you put into each project. Uh, your research shows through the questions, analysis, and considerations you exhibit during commission questions and deliberations. Uh, your 14 years on the commission. Uh, in your 14 years on the commission, you've left your mark on the city as it grew from the small town that you knew to the 170,000 plus residents, along with the new housing and shopping opportunities. You know, you do have a lot to be proud of, and yes, you did a good job. On a personal note, more than a colleague, I consider you a friend. Our side conversations were truly a joy. Early on, I thought maybe the hat you wore, either black or white, might be an indication of your mood concerning the night's proceedings. I eventually realized that that wasn't the case, as you were steady in your convictions and your approach to projects. I, well, I would really uh, like to wish you the best as you decide how you can best serve the city next. And uh, we want to also thank Paula for sharing you with us. So uh, thank you for all you've done, Frank. Um, and Mr. Mayor, thank you for allowing this, devi this deviation to the normal proceedings. Uh, this is kind of a strange time. Uh, during this COVID thing, and I thought this was one way that uh, I, as one of the commissioners, could express uh, and publicly acknowledge my uh, appreciation to Frank for his service. So thank you for allowing me to call in. Not at all. This is the least that we can do to pay respect to our Commissioner uh, Maida. Thank you very much, George. Good luck, Frank. Thank you. All right, let's move to the next item. Next item will be item 4.2, a proclamation in recognition of Code Enforcement Officer Appreciation Week. Hey, I've uh, asked uh, Council Member Darren Sun to take the lead on this. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, is there, a, are we sharing the screen on the proclamation? Or is it gonna stay, it'll stay hidden? Okay, I'll, re I'll go ahead and read it then. But I just wanted to start out um, by recognizing uh, another group of individuals that's a uh, very uh, can be a very tough job at times, balancing property rights uh, as well as um, you know uh, the city's uh, desire uh, uh, laws that we have on on our books. Um, there are eyes on the ground; they keep our city looking beautiful, uh, and it, it's uh, it's not always a, a welcome sight for them. Folks that are being enforced upon, so they have a challenge. But I just want to uh, take this opportunity to recognize our code enforcement officers. Uh, they provide for the safety, health, and welfare of residents, visitors, and businesses in the city of Elk Grove through the enforcement of local and state laws addressing building safety, zoning, housing, environmental protection, and blight. And whereas code enforcement officers have challenging, demanding roles in maintaining our high quality of life, having a highly visible role in the city of Elk Grove, regularly interacting with the public and a variety of federal, state, county, and local officials. And whereas code enforcement officers are dedicated highly qualified and highly trained professionals who share the goals of preventing neighborhood deterioration, enhancing communities, ensuring safety and preserving property values through the application of housing, zoning, building and nuisance laws. And whereas the city of Elk Grove recognizes and honors the code enforcement officers that serve our community and acknowledges their role in leading the way to continue the high quality of life we enjoy in our community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of the City of Elk Grove hereby proclaims the second week in October 2020 as Code Enforcement Officer Appreciation Week and encourages residents and businesses to join in giving the utmost esteem and respect for the work, dedication, and commitment of these fine individuals. Signed this day, 14th day of October 2020. Thank you, Councilman. Um, do we have uh, a representative? While we're waiting, I just want to personally add, you know, uh, of recent, uh, I've been um, working with a community member in a in a part of my district uh, that's been uh, suffering from blight. And I, again, in, in the spirit of this, just want to recognize um, Shane Diller and members of his code enforcement team uh, as well as our, our police officers, uh, public works for stepping in and um, and starting to uh, uh, enforce on on uh, on actions within that within that part of town. Um, goes very much appreciated. Well said, Council. This is Darren Wilson, Development Services Director. 
Um, I took the group out for lunch today just as an appreciation. Of course, we practice social distancing and wore our masks. Um, and what I said to them at first, I said, you guys deserve more than a week. You deserve a month. And uh, I really am truly honored to have them as uh, you know, part of my team. And um, as Council Member Suen stated, there can be a thankless job. There's a lot of negative connotations that go with the job, a lot of stress. But one thing they do is they ensure the quality of life for the city of Elk Grove as you know, consistent with our general plan policies. So uh, for that, no one can argue, no one can debate that. It, it ensures our quality of life. So I, I wanted to thank the group um, for all their hard work and their dedication. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Well said. Uh, appreciate it. Please relay the message uh, to each and every one of them that the City Council uh, does appreciate their hard work. All right, let's move to the next item. That next item will be item 4.3, a recognition of the City of Elk Grove Disability Advisory Committee's 14th Annual Above and Beyond Program Accessibility Award. And I do believe the staff is pulling together uh, our members of our Disability Advisory Committee, including Karen Grusenmeyer, and I'd like to give the floor over to Karen. Thank you. Um, good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council Members. Uh, my name, a statement of the audience, my name is Karen Grusenmeyer. I'm the Vice Chair of Elk Grove's Disability Committee, otherwise known as the DAC. I'd like to introduce the other members of the DAC, Ted Clark Chair, Steve Katz member, Bruce Cager member, and Ann Hennessy member. And tonight, we celebrate the city's 14th annual Above and Beyond Accessibility Award. The award was, uh, oops, hang on here a minute. I'm moving too fast to even have my, my script in front of me. <laughs> the award was created to recognize individuals, organizations, and businesses that have gone above and beyond for individuals with disabilities in our community. This award is important to the DAC and the city because it recognizes Oak, Oak Grove's diverse community. I would like to thank those who are nominated for this award. At, hang on, I got to do it again. I got to move down. <laughs> um, electronic disaster here. Hang on a minute. <laughs> um, okay, I would like to thank those who nominated for this award as they're doing great work. This year, the DAC will be handing out one award. The recipient of this year's award is Visions in Motion. The Visions in Motion provides a personalized and comprehensive adult day program for developmentally disabled individuals, individuals 18 years and older. Um, Visions in Motion collaborated with the Elk Grove uh, City Police Department to develop a training curriculum for our staff. Become more familiar with those members of our community who might have a developmental disability. That training resulted in the forging of relationships between clients, clients, families, and the women and the men and women of the Elk Grove Police Department. We want to thank Visions in Motion for their efforts and to show Visions in Motion our gratitude by presenting them with a plaque that has already been delivered to them. The plaque reads as follows: The City of Elk Grove Above and Beyond Accessibility Award honoring Visions in Motion. Hang on, uh -oh. Oh, hang on. I'm having an electronic tantrum here. Bear with me a moment. Uh, come on. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Sorry for wasting everybody's time. Hang on. One more step. Hang on. <laughs> you're doing great, Karen. You're, and you're coming in loud and clear. Please continue. Uh, once your once your computer behaves. My... Too bad I can't track on my, uh, my trip. Sorry about that. Okay, so we're honoring Visions in Motion for outstanding and dedicated service to improving the quality of life for individuals with, with um, disabilities um, from El Grove, California, October 2020. Shirley Lewis, the CEO, and Julie Akawili, the director, are co-owners of Visions in Motion. And Julie is here and would like to say a few words when appropriate. Go, Julie, go. Good evening. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Shirley and I feel honored to receive the 2020 Above and Beyond Award 
We'd like to thank our Elk Grove Police Chief, Tim Albright, for thinking of us for this recognition. When I think of the words above and beyond, it reminds me of the type of support we've been surrounded with over the past five years. This includes our family, friends, the community, as well as many people we didn't know who we now consider dear friends. The time and energy that's been provided to us by those that care about the special needs community is what we feel has made Visions in Motion a program that we can all be proud of. We think it's also important to mention our staff who show up to work every day knowing that anything can change at a moment's notice, yet they are committed to providing the same level of service to our clients. We know it's not easy, an easy thing for them to do, and we appreciate them. We truly love what we do, and we are always grateful that it often doesn't feel like a job, but more like getting to spend our days doing something we are passionate about. So again, we thank you for this very meaningful award and we look forward to continuing our program in this awesome city we call home. Thank you. Awesome, thank you everyone. Let's go um, at, uh, let's remember, um, uh, Stephanie Huen to assist me with uh, 4.5. Sorry, Mayor, you cut out. Was that, did you just call me for the proclamation? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think I, just uh, to slow down a little bit, we do have. Uh, I was going to ask that the, the Disability Advisory Committee stay on the line and we can segue into item 4.4 4 if, if well, that works, Mayor. Thank you, okay. uh, Mr. Clerk. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, stand by. So please, members of the Disability Advisory Committee, hang on there uh, because you've got item 4.4, 4, which is the Disability Advisory Committee's annual update. And again, Karen, I'm going to hand over the controls over to you. Oh, actually, Julie. I mean, oh, not Julie. It goes Anne. to Anne. Anne. Yeah. Take it away, Anne. <laughs> um, all right. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council Members. My name is Anne. My name is Anne Hennessy. I'm a member of Elk Grove's Disability Advisory Committee, otherwise known as the DAC. I'd like to introduce the other members of the DAC: Ted Clark, Chair; Karen Bretzenmeyer, <laughs> Vice Chair. Steve Capps, member, Bruce Cager, member, Jim Ramsey, staff liaison. Despite the challenges of the current environment we find ourselves in, the committee has had a productive year. As a point of information, the last update to council was provided in May 2019. Over the last year, the committee has provided feedback to city staff on the following. Proposed curb ramp standards, Laguna Creek Trail Master Plan grant application, Community Development Block Grant, CDBG projects, City's five-year consolidated plan, bike, pedestrian, and trails master plan, Laguna Creek Trail, Highway 99 overcrossing, recycling and waste assistance program, police interactions with those with special needs, access and functional needs and emergency operations, annual curb ramp upgrade project, the committee awarded the 13th annual Above and Beyond Accessibility Award to Brian Boggs, owner of APMT Fitness and a personal trainer who volunteers as the lead trainer for FlyFit, a fitness collaboration between the Elk Grove Police Department and the Fly Brave Foundation. Twice each week, he transports all the equipment needed for the program and leads the participants in their workout. The committee supported the proclamation of October 15, 2019, White Cane Safety Day. The committee also supported the proclamation of October 2019 as Disability Employment Awareness Month. In the coming year, the committee would like to continue to provide review and support of accessibility improvement for projects, provide review of changes and additions to the city's ADA self-evaluation and transition plan, provide review and support of transit and EVAM services, visit review and award the 15th Annual Above and Beyond Award, the committee would also like to help the police department by being a resource for questions about interacting with those with special needs. The committee would like to thank the council for their continuing support. Any questions? Are there any questions? Hearing that there are no questions, uh, I want to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you for your dedicated service uh, to the city of Elk Grove. Um, your time is much appreciated, and um, 
the city council as a whole does rely on each and every one of you to continue to give feedback uh, to uh, each and every one of us so that we can make good decisions. So thank you very much. Mayor. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Yeah, I also wanted to make it, you know, this this will be the last meeting that I'll have the opportunity to receive this annual update from the committee and I wanted them to know how much I appreciate all the support that they've given to the Elk Grove residents and visitors that come to town with disabilities that always looking for better ways to provide services and accesses for for those with special needs and you know I can't thank you enough and you know, after 12 years watching all that's been done and is is phenomenal and, uh, this is what makes Elk Grove a special place with the different committees and commissions that we have. And thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Any other members? Mr. Mayor, this is uh, Councilman Soon. Yeah, I just want to acknowledge uh, the work of the committee as well. Um, I think a lot of us uh, take our Abilities for granted and um, having this service for, for residents, I think it just shows that uh, more that we're an inclusive city and working out, looking out for, for everyone from all walks of life. So thank you very much for all your work. Thank you. All right, excellent. Uh, thank you very much. And let's move to the next item. I think I'm going to continue to ask the Disability Advisory Committee to remain on the line, um, but we're going to turn the tables a little bit for items four, five, and four, six, and that'll be the council presenting proclamations to the Disability Advisory Committee. The first being item 4.5, which is a proclamation declaring October 2020 as Disability Awareness Month. And representing the council is Council Member Stephanie Wing. Thank you, sir. Um, I, I, you know, I couldn't agree more with everything the mayor, our vice mayor, and council members said. You all do so much, and I enjoy the updates and hearing everything you talk about. And you're absolutely right, vice mayor, that this group here is what makes our city very special. Um, I, you know, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to see if we can share this. If I can share this proclamation with our vice mayor, since it is his his last year or his last few months. And I know he has a big heart with the Special Olympics in town, does so much. And so I was wondering if maybe I can share this with him. Absolutely. Um, he deferred to to you. I did ask him uh, earlier, but uh, okay. I'm fine. Vice Mayor, you want to share this with me or you want me to go forth? I can go either way. I'm, I'm very generous. I, I figure you guys are... Uh, <laughs> going to be in the spotlight more than I am and I want to be able to share that glory for you. Well, I'd love to share this with you as one of, uh, you know, I know how much you uh, put into um, this and so I, I'd, I'd really like to share this with you if that's okay. Okay, do you want me to do four or five? Sure. Okay, I'll go ahead and do four or five. Wait, so we're we're reading the proclamation, right? And you're doing the last two? I was just going to do four or five and let you do four or six if you wanted to do that. Four or five. Okay. You're doing four or five, you said? Yeah. Okay. So, so the proclamation for Disability Awareness Month, October 2020. The month of October 2020 has been designated as Disability Awareness Month to celebrate and recognize individuals with disabilities. Disability in no way diminishes the right of individuals to live independently, enjoy self-determination, make choices, contribute to society, and experience the economic, political, social, cultural, and educational mainstream of American society. And family members and friends and members of the community can play a vital role in enhancing these lives of individuals with disabilities especially when the family and community are provided with necessary support services, public and private employers are aware of the capabilities of people with disabilities to be engaged in competitive work in inclusive, inclusive settings. And the goals of the city include providing individuals with disabilities the opportunities and support to make informed choices and decisions, live in our homes and communities where they 
can exercise their full rights and responsibilities as citizens, pursue meaningful and productive lives, contribute to their family, community, state, and nation, and achieve full inclusion in, in our society. Now, therefore, be resolved, the City Council of the City of Elk Grove hereby proclaims October 2020 as Disability Awareness Month in the City of Elk Grove and ask the community to join in honoring individuals with disability. Signed this 14th day of October 2020 by the entire City Council. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, do you want me to just go right into 4.6? Yeah, just go ahead right into it. White Cane Safety Day, October 15, 2020. Whereas the white cane or guide dog, which every blind citizen of Elk Grove has the right to use, demonstrates and symbolizes the ability to achieve a full and independent life and the capacity to work productively in the competitive employment and the white cane, whereas the white cane or guide dog by allowing every blind person to move freely and safely from place to place makes it possible for the blind to fully participate in and contribute to our society and whereas every citizen should be aware that the law requires that motorists exercise appropriate caution when approaching a blind person carrying a white cane or using a guide dog and whereas the California law calls upon employers both public and private to be aware of and utilize the employment skills of blind citizens by recognizing their worth as individuals and their productive capacities. And whereas the citizen of Elk Grove can look forward to a continued expansion of employment opportunities for and greater acceptance of blind persons in the competitive the labor market. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of the City of Elk Grove hereby proclaims October 15th 2020 as White Cane Safety Day in the city of Elk Grove for the purpose of bringing a greater understanding of blindness and what it means to be blind to the citizens of Elk Grove and call upon our schools to offer full opportunities for training to blind persons, public and private employers to utilize the available skills of competent blind persons and to open new opportunities for the blind in our rapidly changing society and all citizens to recognize the white cane and guide dog as instruments of safety and self-help for blind pedestrians on our streets and highways. Signed this 14th day of October, 2020 by the entire city council. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, council members. Uh, to the committee, obviously, um, the council is very appreciative of the work that you do. So again, thank you very much uh, for your dedicated uh, effort to, to making our city a better place. Any other thank members? Thank you to all of you for your support. Yes, very much so. You're welcome. We appreciate it. All thank right. You. Thank you much. I just want to say, uh, Mr. Mayor, if I can, I, I just want to uh -huh. say I appreciate the work the committee does because um, in issues like this, it you. You can't even anticipate what you don't know. And so having yeah. um, you there to to help inform us and, and educate us really is a critical aspect to providing a, a better quality of life for all. So thank you very much. Yeah, I agree with you completely, yeah. All right, excellent. Uh, let's move to the next item. That will take us on to item 4.7, which is the new hire introductions. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. This is City Manager Jason Behrman. If you recall, prior to the COVID-19 and the change to virtual meetings, we used to come before you once a quarter with uh, all of our new hires, as well as those being promoted within the city to have uh, those individuals recognized and council could meet, be introduced to them. Um, we haven't been able to do that because we haven't been able to meet in person, but uh, we took, put our heads together and decided to do a virtual presentation. So our HR department put together a very nice um, couple minute uh, PowerPoint presentation that shows the new hires that we've had actually since the beginning of the year, because we were scheduled to do a new hire introduction, I believe in March, which we weren't able to do. So it goes back a little bit, a little ways, 
Um, but again, I think you, you will appreciate seeing the quality and the caliber of the employees that we've been able to hire as well as their diversity. Uh, and then I appreciate them and their dedication to our community. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and ask our city clerk to go ahead and start that presentation.
course, as you can tell, our HR department has been very busy this year. We're really proud of the people that we've been able to bring on board as well as promote this year. So please join me in welcoming and congratulating them. Yeah, excellent. Congratulations to everybody. Fantastic. Yeah, Jason, make sure you, you share the welcome to the team and uh, very impressive. I, uh, it was a quick, I love the video that you guys put together to give us that snapshot and uh, with a little highlight on each person and uh, the depth of experience as well as the diversity. So congratulations on all the new hires and the promotions. Yeah, uh, Jason, um, that would I lost count, but it seems to be a pretty robust, um, you know, year uh, for the city. Um, how many um, were actually promoted and um, came into the city as a new employees? That's a good question. I lost count as well. I'm not sure what our total count was there, but uh, as you can tell, it's been a very um, active year. Yeah. Well. Um, Good job, uh, good, good job to HR and, and congratulations to those who are being promoted and those who are joining the city. Uh, you picked the right place to be, so thank you all. Anyone else? All right, hearing that there are none, let's move to the next item. The next item will be section five, public comment. Participating members of the viewing audience may comment on any item not on the agenda that is of interest to the public and within the subject matter jurisdiction of the city council. Each person will be allowed three minutes or less if a large number of requests are received on a particular subject. City council cannot take action on non-agendized items raised under public comment until the matter has been specifically included on an agenda as an action item. Members of the public desiring a response to a specific question are encouraged to contact any member of the council or, sit or the city manager at any time. Those participating members who wish to address a specific agendized item are encouraged to offer their public comments during consideration of that item. Mayor, Vice Mayor and Council for this evening on general public comment. There was one written comment that was received prior to the meeting that was circulated to the full council and staff. And besides that, we have six individuals who have called them, but I heard uh, while I was speaking, my own ding went off, which might be an email, but we have six speakers and staff will start pulling them in. Caller, you may go ahead. You have three minutes. Hi, thank you. Uh, this is Chris. Um, I live here in Elk Grove by Morris Park. Um, this is my first time doing this, so forgive me if I say something incorrect. Um, I just had a general question about um, one of the codes in Elk Grove for or, uh, fences and walls, chapter 23.52. Uh, the general question is about fence height limits in the front yard and setbacks. Um, I guess question is if it is according to what the um, code states that seven feet height requirement. Um, is allowed, would that be grandfathered in if somebody had installed that in the front yard? Um, and if, if it's something that can be looked at to be changed, because uh, we've seen some homes in the neighborhood that have been put in fences up in the middle of the yard, and it's kind of making everything look kind of a uh, rundown in a sense. Uh, so I don't know if this is something that can be looked at or considered or. So uh, th thank you for uh, for flagging that. Uh, what I may suggest is uh, for you to have a conversation with our code enforcement officer, and uh, if necessary, then um, we can certainly bring it back. Uh, but uh, I understand that uh, Mr. Diller is not here tonight. So Darren, uh, could you uh, take this on? Yeah, we certainly uh, can look into the situation. As you know, we've had many changes or several changes to our fence. Uh, code throughout the years and um, we'd have to verify the address and determine if it's grandfathered in or not. But if gotcha. OK, yeah. so um, uh, caller, if you could, uh, you know, uh, leave your number and then um, uh, we'll have uh, Darren Wilson and the team follow with you. Thank you. Thank you. We have the contact information for the, the caller, so I'll be able to forward that over to Development Services and they can circle around. Excellent. Thanks, Thank people. That'll take us on to our second speaker under Section 5, General Public Comment. Caller, you may go ahead. You have three minutes. 
to those who called the city council meeting on 923, stating that Mayor Lee is using anti-Bobby Collins as a campaign tool and wasting taxpayer money and city council time. Bobby's running for mayor, and the gang of four, Detrick, Hume, Wen, and Soon, endorsing her makes it fall under city jurisdiction. The people voicing their grievances against Bobby have every right to do so. They have already gone to the school board. On numerous occasions, dozens of public comments regarding Bobby's racism against the Hmong community were suppressed. As for the campaign tool claim, don't even bother with that. They'll believe whatever they want. Bobby, you talk about transparency. I credit you for demonstrating this word well. Transparency is intentionally bearing your soul to the world by showing your true self to others. Yet, your true self as a racist, sexist bully, the political fodder up to bat against Mayor Lee this time around. From the moment you disparaged my Hmong community, we knew exactly what kind of person you are. Your intentional true self deletes and blocks anyone who questions your words and actions. You continue to do so on your For Mayor Facebook page. Why are you deleting or hiding comments regarding people's serious concerns? That transparency you speak of is intentional, but it's based on falsehood. It's a deliberate lie to coerce and deceive people. Again, integrity. Integrity is choosing your thoughts and actions based on values rather than personal gain. Your unfounded allegations are a malicious move to smear Mayor Lee for political gain. And your arrogant ignorance, you drag my mom community into the dirt in an effort to val validate your lies. You publicly attack private citizens who dare stand up against you. You cry about bullying and intimidation, but you're an expert at it. That's why you're also an expert at playing the victim. You alone created this hate and division and outgrowth. You alone put yourself, your family, and the Hmong community in danger. And you alone have failed at every opportunity to remedy the situation. A perfect opportunity was September 29th at the mayoral debate. You could have spoken to the protesters that night, offered a sincere apology, and they would have left. But damn your pride. They didn't show on Mayor Lee's command. They showed up for you. Every chance you get, you swing mud at Mayor Lee. You're everywhere with your woe is me press conferences and ridiculous hit pieces on him. Like the sort of those fake Hmong translations you and your camp use to perpetuate more lies against him, claiming he lied to the Hmong people. In case you don't know, Hmong people can speak and understand their own language. Body integrity is more valuable than visibility. As your bitter troll Linda Boo likes to say, one more time for the people in the back. Integrity is more valuable than visibility. Bobby, we see you. We see right through your transparent BS. Mayor, I, I just want to say right here and go on record. <clears throat> if you're going to allow that kind of comment to pervade uh, public comment at city council meetings, you're really failing to take control of these meetings, and it's it's getting tiresome. So, uh, Council Member Hume, I would be in, in agreement with you. Um, this is neither the time or place, but Mr. Hobbs, can you chime on this? Could we limit uh, what the speaker is saying? Well, unfortunately, Council, it, it's difficult um, because the question becomes whether or not it is some, a matter within the jurisdiction of the City Council, and it's certainly um, aggressive. Uh, speaking, um, but I'm not sure that it crosses a line to something that, that we can limit, and I apologize for that. I'm not sure that we can do that. I'm happy to look into that further for the council if you like. Well, I don't think we need to, to hide behind the laws here. I think what it takes, Mayor, is for you to stand up and, and say that this is not the appropriate place. I don't, I'm don't. i not accusing these people of being your supporters, but I think you can uh, rein in public comment by your own preference of what how you would like to see your council meetings conducted. I think it's well within your purview. I think you can do that. I think you should do that. And uh, like I say, it just it, this back and forth character assassination for you against you, for Bobby against Bobby, it just is it's tiresome and it needs to stop. So, so I realize I the agree. election is coming up. But. Right, I would agree with you, Council Member Hume. So let's make it perfectly clear. For anyone who's calling in to public comment for political purposes, please take it to the ballot box. We need to get uh, city business uh, done here, and uh, we would appreciate, we appreciate the First Amendment, we appreciate your input, but with all due respect, we need to jump on city business. So thank you for your input, uh, but uh, just be mindful uh, that this does, um, you know, overwhelms the city council. Thank you.
Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. And staff will be coordinating, pulling in our next speaker under Section 5, general public comment. Caller, you may go ahead. You have three minutes. Um, Jason, I call. Thank you for patching me through. So my comment is for the last speaker during the September 22nd City Hall meeting and the third to last speaker. You cannot be more offended than the victims. How dare you dismiss the cry of those hurting in the community? The man who is offended by these callers, is your neighbor being a racist and is the same neighbor endorsed by all four of the city council members? You said if I was the mayor and went on a righteous um, rant, well, you're not the mayor, and that's why your community is not being attacked by Bobby St. Allen's racist comments. People are calling in because of the actions and lack of actions by the city council members. City council cut public speaking time in this matter and then moved to vote for a censure with no evidence, only to find that they cannot censure because there is no process in place. It's like writing a term paper without running spell checks, so you got a B plus instead of A. On August 26th, the city council stated that they will not address Bobby St. Allen's racist comments because this is a school board matter, which the school district has dismissed and blocked us from speaking out. The very next day, city council endorsed Bobby St. Allen. Those calling in are appalled by city council members' implicit bias. You have ignored all those that have said they are not calling in for CD, that they are calling in because of the comments by Bobby St. Allen's racism and the critics and the critic of city council members' endorsement of this racist, also doing so while violating the Browns Act. If you actually listen to each speaker, they do address the behavior of the city council member. Did Bobby St. Allen send you to attack these speakers? If so, shame on you. If you are not aware of the background, then we forgive you and please join us in the fight against racism. Trina Burt if any, stated, if anyone knows Bobby, well, we've heard plenty of that. Being a close friend cannot be an excuse to dismiss her racism. By her logic, did she send you here to attack the mayor and call for his resignation? Shame on both of you for your spreading lies and making groundless demands. We know Bobby St. Allen is a liar. Her campaign is paid for bogus translations and lie about it being court certified. We saw the emails from the translation agency to Pablo Espinoza explaining the difference between court certified and agency certified, and that there is no such thing as a court certified mom interpreter in California. Bobby Singh Allen's campaign is based on lies, and city council, Oakland city council member is supporting this liar for mayor. That's all I have. Thank you. Good night. So this is uh, Mayor Steve Lee. Uh, again, I'm going to renew my request for the callers. Um, we understand that uh, this is passionate for many of the speakers, but again, uh, this is a campaign season. Um, if you feel very motivated for one candidate or the other, uh, just make sure you go and walk a precinct. Um, you know, I, I would like to remind everyone that we do appreciate uh, and respect all of those who wish to call in and, and chime in. Uh, but please be mindful that um, uh, City Council does have uh, a city business to attend to. And staff will patch through our next speaker under section five, general public comment. Caller, you may go ahead. You have three minutes. Hi, my name is Amber Chandu, and I'm a resident of Stone Lake at District One. I have two comments to make. The first comment I would like to make is that I'm extremely disappointed by the recusal of Council Member Swen, who represents my district, with respect to uh, voting on the CNU project when it does come before council. I feel like that silences our voices in the West Lake, Stone Lake um, communities. And unfortunately, as it's unfair, it's something that we're gonna have to live with. My second comment is, I would like city council, uh, sorry, city attorney Hobbs to look into the recusal of Mayor Lee. As Mayor Lee over the last couple of years has taken to the upwards of $48,000 with respect in campaign donations from CNU and CNU affiliates. If, may, if the um, council member wives are causing recusal and all they do is work with competing affiliates and jobs that will in no way shape how CNU is mm -hmm. approved, then I feel that the upwards of 48,000 in council 
I'm sorry, in um, campaign donations to Mayor Lee's campaign is uh, appropriate for recusal as that's a lot of money and it could definitely uh, affect how the mayor votes if he's reelected to the position of mayor. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Hobbs, can you chime in on that? Uh, political contribution does not constitute or create a conflict of interest? No, it does not. Under the Fair Political Practices Act, uh, receipt of political campaign contributions is not grounds for disqualification. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Caller, you may go ahead. You have three minutes. Thank you, Nicole. Good evening, Mayor, Council members, and staff. Diane turn here. No, I haven't gone anywhere. Just extremely busy and trying to be a parent and a teacher at the same time. It's been very difficult for most Americans today in this new normal, but I would not have it any other way. Without proven and effective vaccines to protect our society, our nation, I would not send my children back into the classroom, no matter how difficult it is for us and for our our. Thank you all for continuing to do what's best for our communities, our schools. However, you are not doing your best job. Excuse me. However, you are not doing your job at its best as you refuse to protect the livelihoods of Elk Grove residents and our children, our future. You have failed to do what's best for the citizens of our so-called great city. We can't call Elk Grove a great city if our leaders are not fight, all fighting for the betterment of our lives together with the residents. Mr. Murdoch and Mr. Warner, on August 10th, you both assured participants of that meeting that questions and answers would be posted on the city small cell website. I'm still waiting. Mr. Hobbs, you felt at informing the mayor and the council members what powers the city has with regards to this issue at hand. You have chosen to look the other way and not make any amendments to the Elk Grove Municipal Code. You all know this can be done. When will any of you step up and properly perform your best in your positions? Let me remind you all, election day, is around the, election day is around the corner. And if any of you care about your positions, you will do what's best. You will do what it, do at what's best for the residents of Elk Grove. But Mayor Dietrich, he never cared one bit, besides your time is up shortly. Are any of you aware that the PTA of Palo Alto Unified School District just released a fact sheet on safe use of, a, of technology and informed the school district of this? The fact sheet recommends minimizing health effects of screens, reducing wireless radiation. Have any of you walked out to any of the finally publicized locations of these potential cell tenants and realized how close they are to residents' homes? That is a serious health hazard. But good for all of you, right? As it is not next to any of your homes. So of course you're all turning a blind eye, because if it was, you'd be fighting just as I am and have been. Please deny the application for permit 19-07227. For the record, Councilmember Hume, yes, we're tired of all these bickering calls from and for Mayor Lee or for Bobby Singh Allen, but a public comment is a public comment. Everyone's entitled to their time, regardless of the topic. Thank you all. Have a good night. And that concludes the speaker's comment. We will be pulling in our next speaker. We have two more speakers, I do believe, under Section 5, General Public Comment. Caller, you may go ahead. You have three minutes. Good evening, Mayor and Council. This is Mark Graham in Elk Grove. Well, I second what Ms. Saturn just said regarding cell antenna permitting. I have asked the city um, starting on, I think I started on August 10th at the community conference call, whether the city can regulate the location of cell antennas to prevent harmful effects to education. I asked, that, and during that phone call, Mr. Murdoch and Mr. Warner said, we don't know, but we will find an answer and, and, and provide it to you. Here we are, October 14th. They have never done that. I asked, followed up in six different emails that you received. And finally, after the total seventh time, I had asked Mr. Murdoch, wrote back and said, at the time, at this time, the city is not considering any changes to these regulations, so we will not be reviewing possible modifications. This is nonsense. First of all, it's not a regulation, it's the Elk Grove Municipal Code. And secondly, you committed to do that. And third, 
it, it's just part of your job. If you if you were very happy to tell us you cannot regulate the operation of a cell antenna, you and you got an, a, a written opinion from the city attorney, complete with a court opinion, when the answer was no. But this is a different question. Can you regulate the location of cell antennas to prevent harmful effects to education? You and I both, well, I don't know if you know, but the answer is apparently yes, and now you're dodging the question, so this is nonsense. Council, please direct the staff to provide an answer. Now, changing subject. I want to talk, first of all, I'm glad that you're having the Code Officer Enforcement Recognition Week. Thank you. They, they do a good job, and they should be recognized. Um, chapter 6.32 of the Municipal Code talks about noise control, and I've been reading it. I live in Old Town, not far from Elk Grove High School and Florence Markofer Elementary School. There has been some kind of rumbling noise going on, which I hear inside my house and outside my house. It has been going on all day long, and it is just driving me nuts. I know that uh, code. En I'm asking you to send out somebody from code enforcement. The 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 your ordinance says that they cannot do construction noise after seven o'clock at night. I don't know if this is construction noise, but it sounds like construction noise. And I'm asking Captain Mayor and Council if you will direct somebody from code enforcement to go check it out tonight. And I can't tell you exactly where it is, but it has to be close to Florence Marco for Elementary School because that's around the corner from me. And I've been hearing this. It's been going on all day long. It is driving me nuts. Um, the city should enforce the uh, nuisance ordinance and the code enforcement standards in particular. So please do that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Graham. Um, you know, I, I'm curious too. Um, uh, Mr. Wilson, uh, do you think you can send uh, somebody to, to investigate that? Yes, we we will send somebody near the Markoffer Mark School to be able to maybe identify the noise. All right, uh, thank you, Mr. Wilson. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, if I, I'll just chime in here. Uh, Darren, awesome. I would uh, guess that the suspect is probably, um, there's a uh, cable company doing a lot of uh, jack and boring underneath Elk Grove Florin Road. Uh, just to the north of where Mr. Graham is talking about. I don't know if that is what's causing his disturbance or not, but that's the major construction that I've seen. So we'll look into that. We'll work with Bob's group that probably have an encroachment permit if they're doing that and see if that's the source. Excellent, thank you. Next speaker, please. Caller, you may go ahead. You have three minutes. Hi, my name is Gabrielle Ingram. I am um, working in collaboration with the Freedom Angels. I have sent um, a couple emails with documents. Um, and my comment is that the goal was to flatten the curve. That was done. Now we have a tiered system with no green tier for reopening to 100%. Instead, the governor has stated we are moving from a pandemic to a twindemic as we had into flu season. Proof that the state has no end plans. More businesses will fold, more children struggling with distance learning, more elders dying alone in their care home prisons, and no end to the unconstitutional stranglehold of the people. The National Center for Health Statistics emphasized that most deaths are not by COVID, but with COVID. The state has combined the data setting the rates by COVID artificially high. Only 6% of those deaths had no comorbidity on their death certificate. Then there's all the data on the high false positive rate of the PCR test or the pushback Kaiser is getting right now for reporting a patient test as positive every time they came in for a retest so they could go back to work. Testing is full of problems and the data coming from there further inflates the county positive rate. When you review the three articles we sent on PCR testing, it is hard to ignore the fallacies of using it for diagnostic purposes in a clinical setting. You do not need to be a doctor to see how easily the data can be manipulated with this test. For one of the cited articles, in spite of the fact that PCR does not reflect either the quantity or even the mere presence of infectious viral particles, it is currently the gold standard for diagnosis of a case of COVID-19. All other tests that are developed, antibody, rapid antigen, et cetera, are validated against the PCR. It's like grading exams using a key with an unknown number of mistakes on it. The problem has been recognized for months. The result of using PCR as the primary diagnostic test is to inflate the number of cases. We are diagnosing an infection with a test that cannot determine an infection. And based upon the evidence available, correlates somewhere between poorly and not at all with infectious virus. The health authorities, we have instituted PCR diagnostic testing via the emergency use authorization, certainly would have been aware of the potential problems by using this as a diagnostic test. 
Again, we recognize you are not doctors and the situation is uncomfortable when doctors of public health push guidelines. You are, however, elected officials with a solid knowledge of the law, most of you anyway, and have a duty to the people in your city to evaluate if the information other agencies are telling you is right. I would encourage you to read the Atwater City White Papers we emailed, especially pages 7 to 9 of the resolution filed, as they declared Atwater a sanctuary city for businesses. As I speak to officials around Sacramento County, a common concern is what about the CARES and FEMA money that would be left on the table? There's two answers to that. One, given how poor PCR testing is, how much of that money would actually be needed if we no longer tested, tracked, and traced off faulty data? Two, given that's not a popular view and the state is behind much of those decisions, have you checked the quarterly sales tax coming in from local businesses? By what percentage have they declined from last year? Using that data, what do you think the city budget will look like in 21 and 2022 if we continue on this path? There are long-term ramifications that come from these guidelines. Is anybody looking at that? Lastly, there is zero evidence or data showing that we are in a state of emergency. By definition, the burden of proof lies on those stating as such. If they cannot or will not, they're guilty of peddling yeah. fears of population that has been terrorized by media, government, and health officials. Yeah, your time is up. Thank you. Anyone supporting them? Thank you, ma'am. Next speaker, please. And I believe that is our last speaker. I'm just going to give a quick look on my comms, but everything is looking clear. That was our last speaker on general public comment. All right, excellent. Let's uh, go ahead and move to the next item. That'll take us to section six, general administration information. Good evening again, Mayor and Council. It's Jason Behrman, City Manager. Do you have a number of items to report on this evening? We'll start with um, this election. Season. This is the first uh, election cycle that the city of Elk Grove has had a by district election, which means different ballots for our members of our community and our public affairs team and our city clerk's office have put together an amazing video that I'd like Jason to pull up. Um, a short video that just helps to explain what's happening with this uh, election cycle for our community. So. And I'm working on that. Sorry, I'm going through a few screens that were open here. <laughs> Thank you. Elk Grove is changing to by-district voting. In the past, we voted for every council member in the city. Now, Elk Grove voters will only choose the council member representing their specific voting district. Residents in Council Districts 1 and 3 will have options to vote for the candidate in their district and the mayor's race. Residents in Council Districts 2 and 4 will only vote in the mayor's race. Council elections in these areas will happen in 2022. Your ballot will have everything you're eligible to vote on in your district. If a contest isn't on your ballot, you are not eligible to vote in it. The terms for the mayor and the council members remain the same. We vote for the mayor every two years and council members are elected in staggered four-year terms. Changes made this year mean you will only vote in one council district contest every four years. For questions about your ballot or for more information, visit the Sacramento County Voter Registration and Elections website. Thank you, Jason. As always, our team did an amazing job. We do get questions about why we don't, why aren't all of the council seats on my ballot and other questions that people have. This is new this year, so this is a way that we can help inform in a very brief, uh, simple approach. We're going to be sharing that out on social media, getting the word out. So hopefully uh, people appreciate that information. Very well done. Yeah, Jason, I, it was so timely uh, because folks started asking questions, um, you know, as I was out in the community. So that was perfect. So one point. Good job. Awesome. Thank you. A few other items. Wanted to let the council know that our budget division recently has received a certificate of achievement for its performance measurement program by the International City County Management Association. City of Elk Grove is among six, only 16 jurisdictions receiving this certificate of achievement nationally. Congratulations to finance and our entire budget team. Uh, Recycling and Waste team member Carlos Duque was rec recently recognized during the first ever North America Hazardous Materials Management Association virtual conference with the Hometown Hero Award. The award is given to individuals who went above and beyond to put on a national conference that reflects the shared values of the association. So congratulations, Carlos. I'm pleased to report that the police department has received a $207,800 federal grant 
to assist in efforts to reduce deaths and injuries on Elk Grove roads. The one-year grant was provided by the California Office of Traffic Safety through the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Funding will support a variety of traffic safety programs through September 21, including patrols for impaired and distracted driving, bicycle and pedestrian safety education awareness, and collaborations with neighboring agencies on traffic safety priorities. Last Friday, <clears throat> the city released a draft Supplemental Environmental Impact Report for the Sports Complex and surrounding Grant Line Road Industrial Area Annexation. The SEIR addresses proposed changes to the land plan and future infrastructure needs. The SEIR aligns with direction the Council provided back in March of 20 to designate the property as surplus, providing a potential opportunity for industrial development, which does not necessarily preclude development of a multi-sports complex. The 45-day public comment period ends on November 24th. A virtual public meeting to receive public comments on the draft SER is scheduled on November 12th. At the completion of public review, staff will prepare final materials and schedule the project for consideration by the Planning Commission and City Council. The project remains on schedule for possible annexation in the first half of 21. Additionally, the City is taking a second look at Camera Road Corridor and considering a new vision that considers employment trends and today's business site selection priorities. A public workshop that continues the conversation that started last February will be held virtually on Thursday, October 29th at 6 p.m. Session will focus on concepts for a potential vision. Communities invited and encouraged to participate. More information on the registration link for the workshop is available on the strategic planning section of the city's website. A few uh, COVID-19 updates. Council is aware, communities is aware that Sacramento County has moved into um, red tier, tier two on September 29th. This is a less restrictive tier that allows more indoor operations and um, more uh, business activity. Well, we're hoping and we're collaborating with Sacramento County to be able to get to orange in the not too distant future. So we're supporting the effort to turn Sacramento County orange by Halloween. Uh, consistent with the red tier guidelines, the city is also beginning to open reservations for our community center at District 56 and at discounted rates uh, following all the, the new guidelines that are there as far as social distancing and max, et cetera. So if people are interested in learning more about the availability, they can visit our website and District 56 website. Uh, also, relating to the community center at District 56, I wanted to bring the council's attention to new artwork that has recently gone up. Council might remember the um, the art presentation made by Dar David Garibaldi that presented uh, three actually pieces of art to the city, and we've recently hung two of those. Uh, the, one of the paintings is Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the other one is the Statue of Liberty. And we'll be coming back to the council at the next meeting with an update on recommendation for the third piece, which is uh, Mother Teresa. Um, I'm, I'm glad to report that eight small businesses in Elk Grove have received $1.2 million in emergency loans through the city's Lift Investing Emergency Investment and Relief Program. The program provides low interest flexible loans to businesses negatively affected by COVID-19 pandemic. Through the program, the city deposited a million dollars with regional lenders who use the funds to source, structure, and close loans to small businesses located in Elk Grove. In April of this year, the, C the city council approved the city's participation in this program. 100% of the loans were made to U.S. Small Business Administration recognized small businesses, and a portion of the loans were made to women-owned businesses, minority-owned businesses, and businesses located in communities that are recognized by federal and state governments as disadvantaged or unhealthy. The average loan size was $149,000. Federal banking law precludes identif identification of specific businesses or loan details. Um, just an update on the city's small business recovery grants update. In August, the City Council approved the City's COVID-19 Small Business Recovery Grant Program. The program is funded with $750,000 of CARES Act funding that the City received. Grants are available to Elk Grove-based small businesses with less than $3 million in 2019 revenue. As of today, two application rounds have been completed and the application periods are now closed. To date, 87 grants have been approved and processed for payment, totaling nearly $350,000. 77 additional applications are being processed and payment totaling approximately $280,000 will be made soon pending final eligibility determination. And Sacramento County is working to update more space for community members to get updates on county's COVID-19 status and opportunities to ask questions. Dr. Olivia Casirier, Sacramento County Public Health Officer and staff from the Public Health Department will be holding virtual meetings every other Thursday from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Meetings are scheduled tomorrow, October 15th and October 29th. Advanced registration is required for these revenues at a link that's available on the city's web website. And finally, just a quick update on the city's Great Plates 
program that has recently been extended through November 8th. It continues to grow. Currently, we have 456 seniors participating in the program. We are up to 17 restaurants participating. We've served over 122,000 meals so far and uh, invested more than $2.2 million into our local Elk Grove restaurants. And that concludes my report. I'm happy to answer any questions the council might have. Are there any questions? No, sir. And there, there are no questions. Let's move on. That'll take us on to section seven, council comments, reports, and future agenda items. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and start with uh, council member Huen. Thank you, sir. I don't have much. Um, we did our first two by two with SAC RT. I thought it went well. Uh, looks like staff from both parties are going to weed out some of the details. I'll let uh, council member uh, Hume add to it if you'd like. Um, and then I have public library authority meeting next week. That's all that I have, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Um, let's uh, go ahead and move to council member Hume. I'll uh, waive my report. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Let's move to council member Sun. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as Councilmember Wynn mentioned, we have a library authority uh, meeting next week. Um, we had a SACOG tra Transportation Committee meeting last week, uh, as well as today, uh, Councilmember Hume and I attended a Sacramento Transportation Authority board meeting. Uh, we were in the process of recruiting a new executive uh, director, and uh, that process is, is going forward. Um, we were talking about the uh, shortage of Funding left, funding left in the Measure A, uh, which has a lifespan until 2039, but uh, approximately 46% uh, of the, the 1.4 billion that was anticipated over that time period has been reduced due to bonding uh, early and uh, the, the recent, uh, well, the last recession in 2009. Um, we have a state call board meeting tomorrow, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Vice Mayor. Mayor, I'm going to waive mine as well. We're already uh, getting later into the evening and get some good items still to move forward to. All right, we'll do. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. And I'll go ahead and waive mine. So let's move to the next item. That'll take us on to section eight, the consent calendar items. All right, uh, let's go ahead and open for public comment. Uh, Mr. Clerk, is there anyone signed up to speak? I do not. I don't have any pre-submitted comments, and I have no one that has requested to call in on the consent calendar items. Okay, I'll go ahead and close public comment. And uh, members, we have a consent calendar. Is there a motion? I'll move, move consent. Second. There's a motion uh, and a second. And for the roll call vote on the consent calendar items, Council Member Wynn? Yes. Council Member Hume? Aye. Council Member Suen? Aye. Vice Mayor Detrick? Yes. And Mayor Lee? Yes. Consent calendar items will all pass 5 0. That'll take us on to section nine, our public hearings, starting with item 9.1. And 9.1 is a public hearing to consider resolution adopting the supplemental mitigated negative declaration with errata and mitigation monitoring and reporting program for the Sheldon Farms North project, approving a large lot tentative subdivision map, a small lot tentative subdivision map, a design review for subdivision layout for the project, approving an amendment to the city's bicycle pedestrian trails master plan, and approving a park and recreation fee deferral for the Sheldon Farms North project, EG-18-019. Good evening, Mayor Lee, Council Members, Sarah Kirch Gessner, Development Services Planning. The Sheldon Farms North project includes a large lot tentative subdivision map and a small lot tentative subdivision map. The project also includes design review for subdivision layout, an amendment to the city's bicycle, pedestrian, and trails master plan, and a park and recreation fee deferral request. The Planning Commission conducted a public hearing for the project on September 17th, the Planning Commission recommended approval of the Project 4.0 with deletion of then condition of approval number 63. The Planning Commission did not think that it is appropriate to place a condition related to future home design on a tentative map. 
The project site is located on the south side of Sheldon Road between Bruceville Road and Lewis Stein Road. The site is located to the north of the Laguna Creek bypass channel. Surrounding uses include residential uses to the north, east, and west, as well as a commercial development to the east of the project site. The proposed project includes both large lot and tentative lot tentative subdivision maps. The proposed maps are consistent with the general plan and all applicable municipal code requirements and subdivision regulations. The proposed large lot map will create 14 large lots, including one commercial lot, one high density residential lot, a park lot, and other lots for drainage and open space, as well as large lots for financing and phasing purposes. The small lot will allow for further subdivision to create 391 single family residential lots. The proposed project layout and circulation is based on a modified grid pattern. The project includes a total of five vehicular access points, including one access at Bruceville Road to the west, two access points along Sheldon Road to the north, and two access points at Lewis Stein Road to the east. Along the western boundary, the project provides for a 40 foot wide easement to accommodate the planned extension of a light rail transit line. The project also includes the offsite construction of a 10 foot wide multi use trail along the length of the Laguna Creek along the southern portion of the project site. The project includes five residential villages containing a total of 391 residential lots of the 391 lots 269 are designated as medium density residential and 122 are designated for low resident, excuse me, low density residential. The project will create one commercial lot located at the southeast corner of Sheldon Road at Bruceville Road. The project will also create one lot for future high density residential development immediately to the south of the commercial lot. This site is identified by the 2014 general plan, plan housing element update as one of the sites selected to meet the city's regional housing needs assessment unit count allocation for low and very low income residential development. No development of the commercial or high density residential lots is proposed at this time. Future development of these lots will be subject to discretionary review and approval as necessary. The project includes a 2.5 acre neighborhood park, which will be constructed by the project. In addition to dedicating and constructing the park, the project will also pay an in lieu fee to meet their total parkland dedication requirements. A water quality detention basin and open space lots are proposed in the southern portion of the site. The project includes a request to adjust the alignment of a section of the class one multi use trail as it is currently shown in the city's bicycle pedestrian and trails master plan. The project was presented to the trails committee in 2018 and the Trails Committee agreed with the proposed amendments. The project is subject to the Elk Grove Municipal Code Chapter 22.40 Parks and Recreation Dedication and Fees, which requires projects to dedicate land, pay an in lieu fee, or both for park purposes. Pursuant to the code, fees are payable at the time of the recording of the final map. However, for multifamily developments, the City Council may approve the payment of the in lieu fee at the issuance of building permits. The project applicant has requested to defer payment of this park in lieu fee for the multifamily residential lot to the issuance of building permits for that development. Since there are no multifamily units proposed for construction with this project, it would be appropriate to defer the payment of this in lieu fee until the high density residential lot is proposed for development in future. A condition of approval has been included on the large lot map pursuant to this request. The planning department prepared an initial study supplemental mitigated negative declaration for the project, which determined that the project would not result in any environmental impacts that could not be mitigated to a less than significant level. Mitigation measures were incorporated to ensure that the project would have a less than significant effect on the environment. Pursuant to CEQA, the environmental document was circulated for public review. Five comments were received. The comment letters do not identify any inadequacies or deficiencies related to the supplemental mitigated negative declaration. In response to comments provided by the California Department of Fish and Wildlife, staff prepared an errata with revisions to be incorporated into the final document. The revisions do not affect the analysis or conclusions pre pre presented within the document. 
The Planning Commission recommends that the City Council adopt a resolution adopting the Supplemental Mitigated Negative Declaration with the RATA and the MMRP prepared for the project and approving the project with the deletion of Condition of Approval 63 as previously discussed. Thank you. This completes my presentation. I'm available for questions. Jim Gilliman, representing the applicant, is also available tonight by phone. Thank you. All right, are there any questions? I don't, no. I don't hear anyone jumping in, so let's go ahead and move on. I'm going to declare the public hearing open, and I'd like to invite the applicant to speak. Mr. Gilliam online. I am. Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Lee and Vice Mayor Detrick and members of the council. Uh, as stated, I'm Jim Gillum of Gillum Consultants here on behalf of the applicant and appreciate the opportunity to speak before you this evening. Uh, so thank you to Sarah and staff. Uh, Sarah, that was a very comprehensive presentation and, and we've worked uh, with the staff to bring this project before you tonight uh, and uh, really appreciate all the, the hard effort on, on all parties' parts. Um, as, as Sarah described, the, <clears throat> the project has um, single family, multi family, and commercial aspects to it. It also has a significant public uh, amenity uh, in the Laguna Creek Trail that uh, runs from uh, the freeway uh, to the west of the project and has two existing undercrossings of, of the Bruce Hill Road and Lewis Stein Road uh, uh, as part of the existing trail. We will be constructing a, uh, a paved trail from Lewistein Road to Bruceville Road, as well as connecting to those roadways uh, so that you can either go up to the roads and, and travel north to Sheldon or continue along the trail using those existing undercrossings. Uh, that's, a, that's a fairly substantial uh, amenity, not only for the project, but also for the city. And we've taken advantage of that by connecting in uh, six locations uh, to the to the project. So uh, we're, we're excited about that as well as a park internal to the project. Um, I wanted to touch on a couple of key points that were brought up in the presentation. Uh, the uh, multifamily fee deferral is something that we are seeking. It is a, um, a, a timing concern and not only a timing concern, but a, a financial impact concern. The code reads that you charge the maximum potential density on the overall acreage of the parcel. Uh, not only do we not know what that will be uh, until we do a design review, but there's also a significant portion of the multifamily high density lot that will be dedicated as an IOD to the city for a future light rail corridor on the west side of the project. So uh, we appreciate the uh, opportunity to request that deferral. I'll be happy to answer questions about that. Uh, and um, and as well as uh, condition 63, I think we've we've all discussed that in the past, but uh, happy to go into as much detail as you'd like. Um, with that, I would uh, open myself up to questions and uh, appreciate the opportunity to speak before you. Thank you, Mr. Gilliam. Are there any questions for the applicant? Hearing none, let's go ahead and open for public comment. Mr. Clerk, is there any members of the public signed up to speak? I do not have any members of the public signed up to speak or be dialed in and just checking my comms and no comments were received on this item prior uh, to the meeting. Pardon me and my computer system. Oh, it's telling me something else. So, but no other request to speak on this item. All right, uh, thank you, sir. I'm gonna go ahead and close public comment and uh, Mr. Gilliam, would you like to return back and uh, rebut yourself? No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Excellent. Um, I'm going to go ahead and declare the public hearing close. And uh, Council Deliberation and Direction. Mr. Mayor, this go is ahead. Council Member Singh. Thank you. Uh, I, I just, uh, well, first of all, I want to thank um, um, Mr. Gilliam for, for being here tonight. Um, on this application, you know, we've um, always look for an opportunity to develop infill and I think it's it's nice to see this uh, this piece finally going forward I think the future residents in this community uh, will be able to 
to port the commercial areas to the south, to the east, to the northwest, uh, even though that's in Sacramento, but at least the ones to the east and the south. Um, and uh, I look forward to, uh, we've spoken with with RT, and I know Councilmember Hume, Councilmember Wynn can chime in a little more, but uh, they've always talked about uh, having service, adequate service at, at that next light rail station. And I think the re future residents in, uh, in this area uh, could also um, provide that support, uh, 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 ridership for that uh, future light rail station. So. Uh, the only thing I'd add is that you know I'm, I'm uh, in agreement with uh, the Planning Commission and staff recommendation to um, remove the, the condition of approval. However, I'd just like to separately like to urge staff to just move forward with the uh, design review process so we can have some consistency and predictability uh, for future uh, applicants uh, wishing to build as they go forward. Uh, so with that, I'm going to support the project. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and make the motion and. Uh, I'll wait for further comments. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Um, Mr. Gilliam, uh, just to let you know, I've um, spoke to a number of residents uh, uh, that live in or about that area uh, who have uh, shared with me that they're looking forward uh, to sidewalks. And so, you know, this ultimately uh, will have sidewalks, but I think that's something that uh, is really, um, you know, long awaited for the residents that live uh, in that area. So uh, I'm glad to see them moving forward. Anyone else? I'll second. Got a motion second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Hold on a minute. <laughs> All right. Nice for Go ahead. I wonder, hey, I got to take my last licks. <laughs> uh, and I want to thank uh, Jim Gillum and his team. You know, we've had the opportunity to work together on this project for quite some time, and there's been quite a few variations and uh, incorporated what the various council members' views were on what needed to be done there, as well as the input from staff to come up with. You know, it started out as a good project, but I think it's turned out to be a great project. And with the ingress and egress out to Laguna Creek, as well as uh, the mixed type of housing that's going to be available, uh, I think it's a great project. And I know it's already had a first and second, but I'm going to support this project as well when we go to vote. Excellent. Anyone else? All right. And there are none. Let's go ahead and uh, do the roll call. And we have a motion and a second for adopting the resolution of the staff recommendation. The roll call vote. Council Member Wynn? Yes. Council Member Hume? Aye. Council Member Suen? Yes. Vice Mayor Detrick? Yes. And Mayor Lee? Yes. That resolution will pass 5-0. And that will conclude item 9.1. And take us on to our next public hearing, item 9.2, which is a public hearing to consider an ordinance amending section 23.18.020 of the Elk Grove Municipal Code regarding permit time limits. Good evening, Mayor Lee, members of the uh, City Council, Antonio Ablog, Planning Manager, uh, here to present to you uh, item 9.2, which is the Municipal Code Amendments to Section 23.18.020, specifically pertaining to permit time limits. Um, the code amendment being um, proposed to you tonight is to, uh, again, to that Section 23.18. Um, the existing code reads that um, approved entitlements, whether they be conditional use permits, uh, design reviews, variances, um, and so forth, have three years from the date of final approval to exercise those uh, approvals. Uh, what staff is proposing is to extend um, uh, that uh, time period to exercise those approvals uh, to four years, so that would be an additional year. Uh, staff proposes to have this one additional year in place until November 28th, 2021, uh, which is a, a one year date from the effective date uh, should the council uh, vote to approve uh, this uh, request to amend the code. Um, as far as some background, 
Uh, on March 13, 2020, uh, the city uh, of Elk Grove uh, declared a local emergency uh, due to the COVID-19 virus. Uh, that uh, state of local emergency was ratified by the council on March 18, 2020. Um, staff has noted that while construction has commenced or continued on some projects, we, we do have some projects that have been placed on hold or um, have slowed down um, in their pace of construction due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Um, uh, also in our um, drafting of this ordinance amendment, we researched other cities and municipalities and found um, others uh, around the state and in the region um, have uh, offered similar one-year extensions uh, through different mechanisms, such as the one we're, we're offering tonight, which is a code amendment. Um, and similarly, this uh, extension is in line with, this, with what uh, the state recently approved for tentative subdivision maps, uh, giving an 18-month extension for those. Uh, the code amendments before you tonight would capture some of those projects uh, that would not be extended uh, as they don't have a tentative map, things like commercial projects, um, design review, um, and other projects similar. Uh, the language um, is up on the screen before you. It adds section B to the permit time limit um, uh, section of the code. Um, so the language it adds, notwithstanding subsection A, which is the three year um, time limit, any administrative and quasi-judicial quasi permit, um, including but not limited to conditional use permits, deviations, variances, and design reviews, uh, approved um, but not yet fully exercised um, as of that November 28, 2021 date, uh, will have a valid period of four years, um, thereby extending the, the um, time to perfect those approvals by one year. Um, again, this would affect conditional use permits, design reviews, deviations, and variances. Uh, it does not affect tentative parcel maps or tentative subdivision maps, but as I mentioned, uh, the state recently approved extensions for those um, for 18 months. Um, this does provide a four-year period to exercise those approvals. It applies to projects that have already been approved and are still valid or that will be approved through the uh, 2021 date. Um, and that's when this ordinance would sunset. Uh, regarding CEQA, uh, the projects that uh, will be extended through this modification of the ordinance um, already go through the CEQA process. Therefore, um, the, the amendment before you tonight is exempt um, uh, as the ordinance amendment itself does not have any environmental effects. Uh, therefore, uh, this evening staff is recommending that the council uh, adopt an ordinance finding the ordinance exempt pursuant to CEQA guidelines section 15061B3, which is the common sense exemption and adopt an ordinance amending section 23.18.020 uh, related to permit time limits. Uh, that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions should you have any. Are there any questions? Hearing that there are no questions, let's go ahead and move on. Uh, I'd like to declare the public hearing open and open this for an item for our public op, uh, comment opportunity. Mr. Clerk, is there any members of the, uh, of the public sign up to speak? I do not have any requests. There were no prior written comments submitted, nor are there any folks that have asked to be dialed into the meeting tonight. So no public comments on this item. All right, thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and close public comment and to declare the public hearing closed. All right, Council of Deliberation. Introduce and waive the full reading by substitution of title only and ordinance amending section 23.18.020 of Elk Grove Municipal Code regarding permit time limits, CEQA exempt. Second. Okay, hey, got a motion second. Roll call vote, please. And for the vote on the ordinance and the staff recommendation, Council Member Wynn? Yes. Council Member Hume? Aye. Council Member Suen? Yes. Vice Mayor Detrick? Yes. And Mayor Lee? Yes. 
That ordinance will pass 5-0 under item 9.2. That will conclude that item and take us to section 10, our regular agenda action item and recommendation to one item, item 10.1 which is to consider appointment of one voting member to the Planning Commission. As we open the meeting this evening, we uh, recognize the service of Frank Maida, um, who stepped down from his seat, thus creating a vacancy. Uh, back on September 9th, we opened up the recruitment process. Last Wednesday, we asked that applications come in and 16 applications were received. I do have a series of those applicants who have signed up to be dialed into this meeting this evening. And as well, uh, prior to the meeting, we did receive two written comments that were received and distributed to the full city council and staff. But, but with that, I turn it over to the city council and I think we have a number of folks who would like to address you this evening on the matter of the appointment. All right, uh, let's go ahead and start with uh, those that have signed up. So I'm going to go ahead and open for public comment. And staff will be reaching Caller. out. Oh, here we go. Sorry, caller, you may go ahead. You have three minutes. Oh, thank you. Mayor Lee and council people, my name is Hollis Erb and I am applying for the vacancy on the Planning Commission. Um, and I was very pleased with all of your accolades for Frank Maida earlier this afternoon, or this evening rather. I have been regularly attending the Planning Commission meetings ever since I moved to the city of Elk Grove. I prepared for the meetings, I read the applications, I often comment, sometimes I simply send in some notes to the staff ahead of time. I've done everything I can in terms of regular attendance to prepare myself to see the rhythm and the process for the meeting and to see how the meetings are generally run, what precedents are being set and what's happening within my beautiful new city. I think I might be in attendance about as much as Lance Armstrong, the uh, journalist, and more than almost anyone else. I had nine similar years up through the week that the moving van came to my house in my previous municipality. So I am very comfortable with the concept of what a planning commissioner does and how to perform the job responsibly and with joy of being of good service to my city. I want very much to assure you that I would love to do this. I have been looking forward to it. I have been preparing for it. And uh, if any of you have any questions of me, I would be delighted to address them this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Are there Next any speaker. questions? I, uh, I don't think there are. Yeah. If there are any questions, go ahead and uh, speak up. I don't see any. Next speaker, please. And staff will be patching through our next speaker uh, to let the council know that our speakers that are signed up under 10.1 are all applicants um, for the opening. Caller, you may go ahead. You have three minutes. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor. My name, uh, good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council Members. My name is Walter Herrera. I am currently one of the applicants applying for the vacancy uh, within the Planning Commission. I have been a resident of Elk Grove for the past uh, 18 years. Uh, my wife and myself, we currently own our commercial location and operate three small businesses from it. I feel that I'm at a point in my career where I have the ability to give back to Elk Grove. Elk Grove has been a city that has not only embraced uh, our family or businesses, and I am excited for the opportunity that I have tonight. Um, a little bit about myself, um, I was in construction for about 14 years, um, also worked as a state certified journeyman electrician for about seven years, and I'm currently employed as a real estate broker, which I feel gives me an understanding of property rights and land use. Council, when I came to Elk Grove about 18 years ago, I fell in love with the greenery. I live over by the Wackford Center, and when I drove down Bighorn, uh, it was lined with trees on both sides of the boulevard and in the center. And it was starting to form that canopy that was covering almost the entire street, which made me feel great about living in a small town. But it also had its modern amenities like shopping, dining choices, and it still had its rural areas. I think to this point, I still have the dream that 
one of these days I'm going to be able to uh, buy a small ranch and hopefully maybe have some chickens and some goats. Um, but now as a real estate broker, as I encourage families to move to Elk Grove, uh, they are still falling in love with the same things that I did 18 years ago. They like the greenery, they like the trees, the parks, the schools. Do they have some complaints? Yes, they complain about traffic. But we understand that part of growth, and I know that the city is working diligently uh, to correct those issues. Council, I really look forward to the growth that Elk Grove will have in a positive, modern direction. As an older generation, I know that we're not building Elk Grove for me. We're actually building it for our kids and our grandkids and the generations to come. But I'm also looking forward to maintaining uh, the small town and rural area and feel and charm of Elk Grove. And so, Council, if this is the vision that you have for Elk Grove, then I'm the applicant for you. Uh, this will be my second time applying for this uh, vacancy. Um, I, my first time applying was uh, in February. So I thank you very much for your time, uh, and I'm available if you have any questions. Thank you, sir. Are there any questions? I do not see any questions, so let's go ahead and move to the next speaker. And staff move through a sequence. We only have a couple of phone lines, but we have several speakers and what happens after a speaker uh, completes their comments, we switch and call out the next one. So for all of our applicants who have requested to be dialed in, you should be expecting a phone call soon. Uh, we only have so many lines and so many hands in order to pull folks in, but you should expect that phone call soon. Caller, you may go ahead. You have three minutes. Thank you so much. My name is Vera Shaw, and I would be considered to be part of the Planning Commission. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak today. Um, I am a city resident here. I've been here for about 12 years. I moved up from Southern California, and I love being part of Elk Grove. And as the last speaker said, I very much enjoy the trees and the master plan community that we have. Uh, but I'm also involved in different portions of the city. So as a healthcare professional here in town, but also part of Rotary, part of my kids' school side council, I get to hear from different avenues of residents here. And many residents love Elk Grove, but there are a few that, like the last speaker said, about traffic and other concerns uh, have become more to the forefront of this city. So I would like to go ahead and consider being involved in planning of this process. At certain times, it has taken me over 25 minutes to get across from the 5 freeway to the 99 freeway uh, on Elk Grove Boulevard, which means that we probably should be timing our lights better or having better lighting or having better access to parks. A lot of these things I have noticed myself and I just feel that I would like to be involved in this process and be able to kind of give my thoughts on this. Being uh, part of different communi uh, communities down Southern California, but also in the Bay Area, I've seen how the city can possibly plan for more inclusion of different families, but also different socioeconomic uh, groups within the community itself too. But uh, I do love Elk Grove and I do believe, however, lastly, it can be more than just a bedroom community. I believe that if we were to go ahead and plan for more industrial like we are doing along Camera Road and Grantline Road, and also to go ahead and bring in more businesses I, as a city and also the city council has already worked on, I think it would be a boon to the city. So I'd like to go ahead and have the, the city council go ahead and consider me for the planning commission. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Any questions for this applicant? Seeing none, let's move to the next one. Caller, you may go ahead. You have three minutes. Perfect, thank you. Good evening, uh, this is Sergio Robles. I would like to begin by thanking you, Mr. Mayor, and Mr. Vice Mayor, and along, along with the rest of the city council members for making time to meet with me during this process. I also want to congratulate um, Commissioner Maida uh, for these years of service on the Planning Commission. And to be honest, the next commissioner has some big shoes to fill. Please allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Sergio Robles. I was born in Texas, raised in Minnesota, and have spent my formative years in the Elk Grove and South Sacramento area. Elk Grove has provided for my family and I since, since a belonging in the community. As a longtime resident, I have personally experienced the changing landscape of the city. 
The Planning Commission provides a fundamental service for our community. With so many diverse projects, the Planning Commission serves as a local gatekeeper for our grounds. In 2020, in, 20, um, in 2001, the elk population was roughly 80,000. In 2010, it was roughly 153,000, which leads now to 2020, which is surpassing 180,000. Within this growth in the population, it is necessary for our city to continue to grow on the values that have provided stability in the past. And while we remember and cherish our historical past, we cannot risk the adverse of the future. We must be good stewards of our land that we currently have for the people we call our neighbors. This includes understanding conditional use permits, staying up to date with the development that is occurring on the Southeast policy area, focusing on the rural residential areas, and understanding the transit ordinance development that is occurring um, and is currently taking place along Hammond Road. My position in Congressman Bear's office has provided a daily opportunity to work with the state and local partners, as well as our chamber and our regional stakeholders. The relationships that I've built on mutual trust and integrity has been on the understanding that people come first. As a member of the Elk Grove community, I feel that it's a sense of duty to do my part and to help my city. As Elk Grove continues to grow in size and population, the development must also reflect the change in our region. With my background and experience, I will bring a diverse perspective with institutional knowledge from the Sacramento area. I'll finish with this. If chosen to be the next Planning Commission of District 3, I commit right now to attend every meeting that is scheduled. And I commit right now to make it a point to tour all development projects that are brought before the Commission. And I also commit to bring a passion that I have for public service. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Are there any questions for this applicant? Seeing that there are none, let's move to the next one. Caller, you may go ahead. You have three minutes. Well, thank you. My name is Mo Rahim. First, of all, I just want to say I'm excited and enthusiastic about Elk Grove. It's a great city, as we all know. I appreciate each and every one of you, Mayor, to the council members of serving our great city. I've been in the new home industry for nearly 15 years now. So I bring a great perspective to the city of Elk Grove of understanding what it takes to develop a great project, a product, something that everybody can be proud of. So I will bring that to the table on the Planning Commission. Also understanding how to work together with others to bring a common goal in mind. The Planning Commission is key to the overall fundamental growth of Elk Grove, but in the right ways. From the direction of the mayor and the council members, the Planning Commission kind of sets that tone and it'll make sure that we achieve that goal. That's not only right for our community, but our residents, but also for businesses to continue that growth. At the end of the day, we want Elk Grove, and I see Elk Grove as I talk to residents, talk to neighbors, talk to businesses, and within my industry, um, that we want to see Elk Grove as a place we can work, we can live, and we can play. And that starts with the Planning Commission, with the guidance and agenda of the mayor and the council members. My time, I've served on, <clears throat> excuse me, the North State BIA Building Industry Board of uh, board of directors so i understand what it takes to work amongst a team to achieve a common goal but also amongst the members that reach there and how you have to build partnerships and have integrity in your decision making to make sure it's beneficial to all at the end of the day i know myself mo Rahim, a member of elk grove for nearly 15 years my parents are here from 25 years will bring a key a key and keen insight to the committee that i think is needed and as well as well deserved at the end of the day to help the growth of elk grove going forward so with that, I'll leave it open. Any questions, I'm here to answer them without a doubt. I'm just here to serve and want to serve the great city of Oak Grove in any way possible. Thank you. Mo Ryan. Are there any questions for this applicant? Seeing no questions, let's move to the next one. Caller, you may go ahead. You have three minutes. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and City Council members. My name is Sandra Poole, and I appreciate the opportunity to provide comments this evening related to the vacancy on the Planning Commission. As a resident of Elk Grove for close to 20 years, I have watched the growth and transformation of our community. As with any growth, there will always be growing pains along the way. However, I believe that with a commitment to doing what is best for all residents, 
Elk Grove has the talent to keep evolving and moving toward the goal of a world-class city. When I was approached by a colleague and asked to consider applying for this position, I immediately thought about what motivated me to purchase a home in Elk Grove and also what I could contribute to the Planning Commission. I moved to Elk Grove because of its reputation of diversity and as a safe community for my family. The city's vision statement that Elk Grove prioritizes a superior, superior quality of life built upon the community's diversity resonated with me. What I would bring to the planning committee is a vast professional and volunteer experience in government, nonprofit, and private organizations. My professional experience includes having served as a deputy director in one of the largest state departments in California, president and CEO of a nonprofit health advocacy organization, and policy manager for a Fortune 500 health company. After retirement, I started my own consulting business. In addition to a master's degree in public administration, I have volunteered most of my adult life with several nonprofit organizations with the goal of always giving back to my community. In all of my professional and volunteer positions, I have been successful in resolving complex issues by adhering to core principles of respecting and treating others with dignity, being open, inclusive, and listening to diverse ideas, and also striving for a win-win solution. As Elk Grove continues to grow and profess to provide itself on being a diverse community, it is critical that the governing bodies of the city mirror the diversity of the community. It is my belief that as an African-American woman with a vast array of experience on advisory committees, that I would be a productive and positive addition to the committee. Whether it is in this capacity or some other future capacity, I look forward to contributing my experience, talent, and skills to the betterment of the city of Elk Grove. Thank you. Thank you, and are there any questions? Seeing none, let's move on to the next applicant. Thank you, staff, for reporting everybody through. We're at our seventh speaker here on item 10.1, and we'll continue moving through the list. Caller, you may go ahead. You have three minutes. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, City Council members. My name is Gus Vina. I live in El Grove. My wife and I raised our three daughters there, and we are now both retired in our forever home in El Grove. Thank you for the opportunity to discuss the planning commission vacancy. I will be brief in respect for your time this evening. I provided all of you uh, two pieces of information. The first was a professional resume. And on there you will see I have 39 years of experience in government, um, 30 of those years in local government, and 10 of those 30 years as city manager. I was city manager in the city of Sacramento, the city of Encinitas, and the city of Brentwood. I have significant amount of experience in updating general plans, implementing and updating housing elements, as well as implementing specific plans, a variety of uh, different projects with uh, development groups. Um, so I offer in this position a significant amount of experience in the planning process, and I fully understand the role um, of independent thinking as well as working uh, as a team member of the Planning Commission and applying uh, the City Council's policies to projects as they come forward. The second piece of information I provided you is a letter of qualification. It speaks to my motivation. I was lucky enough to retire young. I'm looking to give back to my community, and I wanted something meaningful. So I'm not just looking to stay busy, uh, but I'm looking for something that has a significant meaning. And I know that the City of Elk Grove um, has very important projects coming forward, and it would be an honor um, to serve you on the Planning Commission. And so I uh, wish you luck with that decision this evening. I want to thank you for the opportunity. I also would like to take a minute to thank the City Manager, uh, the Planning Director, and the City Clerk. Your staff has been amazing and very responsive throughout the application process, and I very much appreciate that. So good luck with the decision. It would be an honor to serve you on the Planning Commission, and thank you for the opportunity. 
Thank you, sir. Are there any questions? Seeing that there are no questions, let's move to the next applicant. Caller, you may go ahead. You have three minutes. Hello, this is Blanca Espinosa. I would first like to thank mayor, vice mayor, members of the city council, and everybody at this meeting. Um, I would like to let you know that, yes, I'm very happy to be here, and I really would like to contribute my time, my energy, my efforts to the city of Elk Grove to help make planning decisions that are consistent with the general plan, the municipal code, and the laws and regulations that affect us. Um, a little bit about myself. I am an attorney. And I am a humble person by nature, but I will say that I'm very proud to be able to say that I'm an attorney because I overcame many obstacles to get to this point in life. And one thing that I really want to do is encourage other people to overcome obstacles they may have to reach their goals and to make their lives the best possible. I work as the family law facilitator for the Superior Court of California, County of Yolo. In my position, I'm in charge of the daily operations of the Self-Help Center. What we do is we provide legal assistance to the public in family law, domestic violence, civil harassment, probate guardianship, and many other areas. Most of the people that we serve are low income and cannot afford the cost of a private attorney, and we assist them as part of the court. I'm also the manager of Family Court Services, which is a program that provides mediation for parents when there are contested issues of custody and visitation. I've been at the court in Yolo County for almost two years, and prior to this, I worked for the court in Alameda County for 14 years. And during those 14 years, I was primarily a staff member of the self-help center in that county. Something that I've learned from my years of serving the public is that although every life experience is unique, we as people have many more similarities than differences. And the same is true for the residents of Elk Grove. People want to be happy. People really need a sense of purpose, a sense of belonging. This can be found in unified, strong communities in our city. People want safe neighborhoods, clean neighborhoods. They want to enjoy their homes. They want to have enough income to support their households. And parents want their children to obtain a good education. Those are all the things that I would love to encourage for my fellow residents in Elk Grove. And I want to do my part to help Elk Grove to continue to be a wonderful city for all of us and our future generations. Thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you, ma'am. Are there any questions? Seeing no questions, let's move on to the next applicant. Caller, you may go ahead. You have three minutes. Thank you. I'd just like to thank city staff for making all these calls. I know it can be a long night. I have promised to be brief and to the point. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council members. I just want to provide a brief introduction. My name is Tong Fan Kwong, or some call me TPQ for short. I'm a 20-year Elk Grove resident, currently residing in District 3. I have a son attending Pleasant Grove High School and a daughter who just recently graduated from Pleasant Grove. I currently work for the California Department of Public Health as a program analyst. I believe my training, education, and experience lend itself to becoming a successful planning commissioner. I'm under no illusion of expecting to fill the large shoes that Mr. Frank Meda has forged ahead of me. His dedication and commitment to public service is an example for all of us, including myself, wish to follow. I understand his commitment to public service. I've worked for the city of Elk Grove as a code enforcement officer for 12 years. This valuable allowed me to understand the city intimately and also to understand what the residents have come to know and expect of its city leaders and employees. And that is by highest caliber of professionalism and service. Because of my many years working in municipal government, I have built a strong working knowledge of public policy, planning, and land use principles, as well as collaborative relationships with many city staff. The year 2020 will most certainly be recorded by historians as one of the most divisive and polarizing in modern times. And although we are nearing the end of the calendar year, the year is far from over. It is my belief that the planning commissioner position should be apolitical and devoid of any political influence. That being said, my core values are integrity, character, competency, and strength of heart. If selected to be the next planning commissioner, 
I pledge to apply each of those traits in service to the city and its residents with an objective towards impartiality and fairness. In closing, I wish to express my gratitude to the mayor, vice mayor, and council members for your public service, dedication, and commitment to this city and its residents. Thank you and have a good evening. Are there, thank you, sir. Are there any questions? Seeing no questions, let's move to the next applicant. And thank you, staff, for pulling in our applicants. We're at our 10th speaker here under item 10.1. Caller, you may go ahead. You have three minutes. Council, Vice Mayor and Mayor, thank you for giving us your time. My name is Irfan Mahmoud, and I live here in Elk Grove with my wife and three boys. Uh, we love it here. I'm an ex-investment banker and currently a multi-unit franchise investor, real estate investor, general contractor, and a CPA candidate. Uh, um, one of my businesses, Nothing But Cakes, which hopefully many of you already know, uh, is located in Elk Grove and Laguna Gateway South. I'm very familiar with the Planning Commission role, but more importantly, as a business owner and resident, I've worked with the City Building Department, Zoning, TSD, and Code Enforcement and solving a myriad of issues that I've had to encounter. My work involves every district in Elk Grove. I have a vested interest in seeing the city carry on the vision of the mayor and the council, along with assuring developments, programs, and zoning criteria are in sync with the city's general plan. Uh, thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you, sir. Are there any questions? Seeing that there are no questions, let's move to the next applicant. Caller, you may go ahead. You have three minutes. Okay. Uh, good evening. Um, my name is Edgar Calderon. Good evening again to the City Council and the Mayor. Uh, the reason I'm calling is to express my interest in the position as a City Elgro Planning Commission Advisory Board member. I reside in this decree, and I've been a citizen of Elgro for, for many years. Uh, my kids graduated at Sheldon. And my granddaughter goes to school in here, so I'm very interested in this. I believe that together at the City Planning Commission will bring value. We can deliver to constituents by becoming a smart city and help the future generation of El Grovian with smart growth, thoughtful planning, affordable housing, economic development on the new economy, and, and help the city through a smart city, smart city journey. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of your time. I know probably you're going to go home, so please consider my, my application. I saw the list of applicants, and I know some of them are with great qualification, but I think that we can, uh, that I can be of help, and I can be an asset in the role of City Planning Commission. I do have a Citizen Planning Academy certification from the City of Sacramento, and I've done some of the, some of the things around, uh, plus, uh, again, my heart is in Elgro. So I am calling just to express that I would love to work together. And I know you have a very tough decision to do tonight. So good luck and hope to hear from you very soon. This is Edgar Calderon in Sacramento. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Are there any questions? Seeing that there are no questions, let's move to the next speaker. Caller, you may go ahead. You have three minutes. Thank you. My name is Alana Matthews Arcurio, and I am seeking appointment to the Planning Commission as an opportunity to more actively serve Elk Grove, a city I have lived in over the past two decades. As you may recall, I've been active in several ways in Elk Grove. First, as a volunteer for the initial and many subsequent summer at City Hall programs, I was a host as well as a guest speaker. I also stepped in to help resolve the racial incidents happening in the city a few years ago by leading the racial healing town hall and kicking off the No Place for Hate campaign. As a member of this commission, I will work to establish goals and policies to help guide and manage our city's future growth and development. 
I understand that good planning saves money, improves economic development, and quality of life for our residents. More importantly, it will help us prepare for the future and as an attorney with expertise in energy, environmental law, and climate change, I am prepared to help put Elk Grove on a path to a more sustainable and resilient future. You have my application and my resume, so you know my qualifications. I'll prefer to use the rest of my time to make one additional point. While I am aware that I do not live in District 3, I would ask that you not limit your decision to that narrow criteria. As an African-American woman, I am one of the least represented in Elk Grove City government and on commissions and boards. I believe this vacancy is the perfect opportunity to diversify this commission and ensure all voices are represented in these important decisions and with making recommendations. For this reason, I ask that you give um, either myself or my fellow qualified candidate, Ms. Sandra Poole, serious consideration. Lastly, and in closing, I understand this role involves reviewing development applications and making recommendations on important proposals. Just as you build a building, one brick at a time, the Planning Commission helps implement a community vision, one project at a time. I feel that I will be a valuable asset to helping build the vision of a better Elk Grove where there's more equity, sustainability, and resiliency. Thank you for your time and for consideration of my application. Thank you, ma'am. Um, are there any questions? Seeing no questions, let's move to the next applicant. Caller, you may go ahead. You have three minutes. Thank you very much for your time, City Council. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, my name is Judy Sala. I'm a resident and a homeowner in District 3 in Elk Grove, and also um, I work at the Elk Grove Food Bank as an employee of a nonprofit. Um, I would like to have you take special consideration of an outstanding member uh, of the community who's applied for this position, that's Sergio Robles. Um, I've had the opportunity to work with Sergio on a professional level uh, as he was a member of the um, K Veterans Assistance Program that's sponsored by the Elk Grove Food Bank. I found Sergio to be not only intelligent, but extremely honest and absolutely dedicated and, and sincere um, in uh, the well-being of the citizens of Elk Grove as well as the, the city of Elk Grove itself. Um, I also would like to read a statement by Marie Giacchino, our executive director at the Food Bank. She's at another meeting, and we both echo the thought that, beyond a doubt, Sergio Robles is an outstanding candidate for the Elk Grove Planning Commission. He brings excellent credentials. He served on the K Veterans Assistance Program of the Elk Grove Food Bank Services for the past two years. He exemplifies honesty, integrity, intelligence, and dedication. We believe that his willingness to examine issues and concerns make him an excellent candidate for the position on the Planning Commission. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, next speaker, please. I believe we have two more callers uh, left on our call list as we're getting to the conclusion here on public comment on item 10.1. Caller, you may go ahead. You have three minutes. Hello. Um, so my name is Brandy Lopes, and I would first like to thank the mayor and the city council for consideration of appointment to the planning commission. Uh, I bring to the position excellent communication skills, diplomacy, and forward thinking, especially in navigating the uh, final pieces of revising housing element law and dealing with local and statewide issues relating to the pandemic, the unhoused, and supporting and investing in businesses. I look forward to representing District 3, and thank you again for your time. Thank you. Are there any questions? All right, let's move to the next speaker.
and I believe staff are just making a connection with our last individual signed up to speak. This will this is the last call that's kind of going out. Um, and we'll see if we'll be able to make that connection with them. Caller, you may go ahead. You have three minutes. Hello. First, I would like to thank the mayor and the city council um, for their service to our great city. My name is Margaret Calaray. I'm 25 years old, and I'm an East, Ameri East Indian American. I've grown up in the city of Elk Grove, living in District 2, also graduating from Pleasant Grove High School. Right after high school, I had the privilege to serve in the United States Marine, serving about four and a half years. I absolutely love our city and have seen firsthand at our city's amazing growth. However, I understand our city's um, potential for growth, as a commuter, I understand the improvements that we can make, especially with respect to traffic and also other city problems. I hope to be given the privilege to serve my community. Thank you for your time. Thank you, and I, any, any questions? Seeing there are none. So I think Mr. Lindgren, is this the last speaker you said? I'm just gonna verify with staff, but I think that was the last of our speakers under item 10.1. That is correct. All right, excellent. Um, well, first I wanna thank all the applicants. I know that every time there's an opening on the Planning Commission, um, you know, many of you um, who have applied multiple times, it makes it extremely challenging for the council as a whole to make a decision. Uh, so, you know, thank you for taking the time to fill out the application. Thank the time uh, for um, calling in and participating. Uh, but uh, considering that this is, um, uh, District 3 uh, that needs to be filled. I'm going to extend the courtesy to the vice mayor, who's the representative uh, from District 3, to go ahead and uh, start this off. Vice Mayor? Uh, mayor, thank you for uh, giving me that opportunity. You know, first of all, you know, I want to thank all the applicants, uh, not only for applying, but for calling in tonight. And whatever happens tonight, I hope all of you stay involved in some capacity. Because going through all these resumes, I go, wow, the, the talent pool we have is phenomenal. Of the slate of 16, this is the best credential pool of applicants I think I've seen in the 12 years since I've been on the council. Uh, with the new district voting, one of the goals is to try to have a balance with our appointments by district. We hadn't done that in the past when we were from district because we were equally representing of everybody across the city. But now to try to have a balance, I know this has been one of the goals that the council at least has had a discussion on. And so currently with district one and two having, uh, or the other districts, district one has one representative, district two has one, and district four has two and district three has zero. So to, to try to keep some sort of balance, just like we have with our council members to have a balanced representation across the district, uh, I'm gonna recommend Sergio Robles. And that's all I have for now. I'd like to hear everybody else's number one vote. Uh, Vice Mayor, can, can you give two additional? Um... No, I, I don't want I don't want to do that because that that seemed to cause problems last time. Mm -hmm. Start out with one apiece and see, you know, take everybody's first. If everybody's first is there is a consensus. I think that's a great way to start. All right. Uh, any anyone interested in batting next? I can go next. Um... You know, for all the reasons uh, our vice mayor mentioned, and he's right, we um, had a really good poll this time. I read through all of them. I was very impressed with everybody's experience and they're willing to serve on this commission and emailing us and staying on and, and calling in and taking the time to apply. And I've seen a few names come through several times. Um, and the last time, uh, we had to do this. I did have a number one person uh, that I thought would be amazing for this commission. And when I look for an individual, I look for three things. I do look for involvement in the community. 
involvement now, right? Not, not when you come on board and then you get involved, somebody that has been involved. Experience is something that is needed right now, especially with Commissioner Meta leaving. And then as uh, Vice Mayor said, representation, because now that we are all by district, we do need that balance in somebody from every single district. But I will say I have two number ones. Um, I'd like to bring forth Ms. Hollis again, because I feel like she deserves this position. She's been at every single meeting. She's applied several, several times, and she has the experience. But I do recognize that we also need somebody in District 3 as well, too. And so my number one for that is also Mr. Sergio Robles as well, too. And that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you. Uh... Councilman Mr. Mayor, yeah, Mr. Mayor, because Councilman Soon, thank you. Uh, I thought I'd, I'd jump in. Um, you know, I want to echo the, the the sentiments that were stated earlier. The the qualifications and the passion that everybody exhibited tonight um, to to apply and and want to serve. Uh, I think it's fantastic. Uh, it's it's great to um, to to hear that we're attracting this kind of talent. I mean, we've. We've heard, uh, you know, former city manager Gus Vina, I think, called in from Europe, if I'm not mistaken. I think he's on vacation there. Um, but from people from code enforcement experience, real estate professionals, uh, attorneys, people uh, are small business owners. Uh, and then, of course, even a former planning commissioner, at least one, um, you know, it just really is, speaks to how much talent we have in this city. Uh, I, I do want to agree, though, with, with with uh, what the vice mayor mentioned about balancing things out. Um, this is all new for us with the new system and it's forcing us to look at things uh, a little bit differently as well. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I know if, if my district was not represented, I would certainly be uh, asking for this, the same uh, courtesy. And so uh, in that regard, uh, I, I would um, support putting somebody in from district three Having said that, I need to uh, also want to highlight and agree with what Councilmember Wynn mentioned. Um, I think Hollis is a fantastic uh, individual. She serves on uh, also the, the HOA that I've resided in for 20 years. She's been uh, involved since day one when she moved into the community. As she mentioned, she's attended every single uh, meeting. Uh, and so it, uh, to me, I don't, I don't think there's anybody uh, who's um, on this applicant list that has been more involved uh, than she has uh, over this course of, of length of time. And uh, so to that end, uh, you know, I think uh, she um, deserves an honorable mention. Um, but for my number one, I will go with District 3, and I also agree. I think Sergio Robles, uh, I've interacted and worked with him in the community as well. I think his passion and, uh, and his experience and his uh, with the state, federal, and, and local level, uh, I think will bring a lot to uh, to our city. And so I'll also support uh, Sergio Robles as well for District 3 as my number one. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Council Member Hume. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I echo all of the comments that have been made about the depth of talent uh, in this this round of uh, applications. Um, it really is is amazing and, and humbling that there are so many qualified and overqualified people who are, are wanting to give back to their community and to hear them speak such words of praise as to what attracted them to this community, what they fell in love with about this community and what drives them to serve really is a, a truly uh, honorable uh, thing that, that they've all uh, mentioned. Um, I have a, a bunch of people that I've known from before um, some that I've met uh, through this process. I wasn't able to get back to everybody who reached out to me, unfortunately. Um, and I will say that uh, there are you know, people that I would put at the top of the list for, for you know, experience reasons, uh, people that I put on the top of the list for uh, industry uh, reasons. Um, certainly, as has been mentioned, Hollis has been a stalwart uh, applicant. Uh, every go around, she deserves more than an honorable mention, but given that there is a vacancy uh, in District 3. Um, I do think that that, uh, that sort of representation is important. And so since Sergio Robles' name uh, has been the, uh, the one that's, that seems everybody has rallied around, I did have an opportunity to sit down with him, and he is a very introspective um, and acutely self-aware uh, young man who I think would do an excellent job. So I, I'll back that move. 
Uh, thank you, Council Member. Um, you know, this obviously is a very difficult decision, but, um, you know, with respect to what the virus mayor has had mentioned, um, I think that that's fair uh, to make sure that um, we have balance on the planning commission, uh, especially now, uh, considering that we are now by district. So I, I do give weight to that, uh, although it's something that obviously is not uh, required, um, but uh, with respects to the vice mayor and his, um, you know, passionate, um, you know, representation of District 3, um, I do give credence to that. Um, <clears throat> with the many other applicants um, uh, who have reached out to me, and as I've shared with you, I am after diversity, uh, but it's not just diversity of um, uh, your ethnic background, but it's also diversity from the city. And I think it's important for us to make sure that we have a balance of representation from all over the city so that we can have a planning commission uh, that can do an effective job. Uh, that being the case, um, at this point, I want to thank everyone for applying. Uh, please continue to be involved. As one of our uh, colleagues have mentioned, uh, we do appreciate all of your input. And um, there's always opportunity for you to, to, to chime in and voice um, what you want to uh, see happen in the city of Elk Grove. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, push forward uh, Sergio Robles um, as the next uh, planning commission. And I believe that, uh, okay, go ahead. I think we need to go for a vote, Mayor. Uh, do we need a vote or is it just the, uh, I think it's just a, a uh, push forward uh, by the mayor, at right? At least some indication of consent would be appropriate since it's subject to the council approval. <laughs> Okay, um, I think everyone mentioned Sergio. And yeah, I, gi I give my consent. <laughs> so, therefore, it's Sergio. So given. Done. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. No All right. Excellent. Thank you. All right, congratulations, Sergio. Um, congratulations, so. Sergio. Congratulations. Thanks. Congratulations. And thank you, everybody, for applying. Yeah, right. congratulations, and, and thank you to all the applicants. I hope we can find a, a place for you to, to fill your need to and desire to give back. All right, uh, let's go ahead and uh, adjourn this meeting at 8.33 p.m. Thank you, everyone. That's it. Good night, everybody.